Hi there, it's Jennifer. Are you ready to see how to color an apple using pan pastels and a little bit of Prismacolor? Well, let's get started. First off, I'm going to do a little bit of a sketch of an apple itself, just using a plain graphite pencil. I'm a little slow in this process here and I am erasing a little bit more than I normally would if I'm sketching simply because I don't want all those lines to be showing through my pan pastel. As you can see, I've included the outline of the apple itself and a few reflections. To get started, I'm going to use my permanent red pan pastel. You'll notice that I'm using my square-ended soft knife tool and I'm actually positioning each stroke so that the reflection that I'm creating is towards the end of the stroke. I'm flipping my paper so I can get the other part of the apple that's surrounding the reflection so that you see sort of a soft transition in the middle. Now I've got my magenta, my white, and my permanent red, and I'm going to mix the three with a tiny bit of black to create sort of a, a reflected light area of the apple. The apple is three-dimensional, so as the apple's arc starts to turn downwards, the actual color of the apple is going to change a little bit. It's gonna become a cooler, less saturated color, and that's what you're seeing here. I'm mixing it on a separate piece of paper so that I can apply it onto the apple as one solid color. I'm adding a slightly lighter section to meet the permanent red, which is going to be the most intense part of the apple. The edges are going to be even lighter, so I've added a bit more white. Because many apples aren't 100% red, and there are different varieties of apples like Macintosh and Gala. Look at whatever apple you're trying to recreate. In this case, my apple's got a little bit of gold in the center, so I am using another color to create this sort of transitional effect. At this point, it's kind of a back and forth between my magenta, my gold, and my red. And I am cleaning off my tool a little bit as needed so that I don't completely con contaminate each color. I use a paper towel and I wipe it gently. These are very, very delicate tools that I'm using, so you have to take precaution. Now to give the apple a little bit more form, I'm adding some darker magentas and some darker, more intense reds in a couple of areas. This is going to make it look like it turns more downward. It narrows as it meets the surface that it sits on. The core of the shadow is the deepest where the reflected light is going to meet the most bold and intense part of the red. You'll see at the end of my apple though, I've actually gone in and softened up that really, really dark center just a little bit because I wasn't 100% happy with it. I'm using my knife tool sort of vertically now um, so that I can create the uh, texture that you see on a real apple, which it's not just always a smooth, perfect red. It's a transition from one co color to another, and oftentimes there are striations of color next to one another. The black is sitting right next to the core of the apple. 
and the stem of the apple because that's going to be the darkest area that's most in shadow. Now I'm adding a few more highlights using a little bit of white and blending it back into the sides where I've darkened it just a little. I'm slowly building up a little bit of dull darkness towards the bottom of the apple where it turns under and eventually I will put a cast shadow on, on the surface that the apple sits upon underneath the apple itself to make it look like it's not floating in space anymore. I'm softening the line a little bit along the right side of the apple to make it look more reflective and I'm starting to deepen the stem of the apple using the red and the black together with a little bit of my gold. Now I'm adding a little bit more magenta towards the bottom of the apple. This is going to cool off the color a little bit so that it turns the apple under a little bit. And it's a matter of going back and forth to get my shadows placed correctly. So I've just added a little bit of black underneath the leaf to the stem of the apple because there will be a cast shadow on the apple itself from that leaf. And I've added a little bit more yellow and black in the center of the apple where the core is because again, it does dip down inside there. I did feel like I added a little too much color so I am taking my Mono Zero eraser and pulling out some of the color. I just want to uh, create a little bit more variety here. Now I'm adding a little bit of black underneath the apple itself so that I can create a sense of stability for it. I want it to look like it's resting on a surface. So to create a cast shadow I am using some simple black. You could mix in some of the color of the apple itself to, to give it a little bit more depth, but here I was going for what was fastest. And I am, I am erasing out just a little bit to create a little bit more reflected light towards the bottom. I'm using my white to soften the edges of the shadow. And I'm actually using a little bit of a mixture of the gray to kind of take that one little section that's right next to where it's seated on the table down a little bit. The darkest part of a cast shadow is right under the object itself, so that's why I've added a little bit more black right there. Now it's time to do the leaf and stem. So I'm using this phthalo green and a little bit of black where the leaf starts to roll under or turn a little bit. I'm adding a little bit more black because it won't be catching the light quite as much. And I also have this yellow green as well. That's going to go in the lightest area of my apple. Now I'm adding a little bit of white, a little bit of the yellow green to try to create some sense of form to this leaf and it's really very roughly laid in because I'll go back into it with some Prismacolor pencils after the fact. I'm blending these colors together a little so it's a smoother, softer transition and I'm layering more green of the uh, phthalo green on top to build up that stem. It's very easy to see how quickly you can create something three-dimensional just using Pan Pastel. But for that added punch, I'm going to use some Prisma colors to deepen some of the colors and add a little bit more texture. So I'm creating this shiny surface of the apple by using 
a red Prismacolor pencil, really any red will do as long as it's a bright one and as long as it's a little bit darker than the actual pan pastel. Right now I'm going to use a little bit of my Crimson Lake so that I can deepen up this red just a bit. Time for a little bit of black underneath the apple. Back to my pan pastels, I'm adding a little bit of red mixed with a little bit of white just to sort of smooth out that surface a little bit. And then I'm going over top with my white Prisma just to add a few more reflections. You can use either your Prisma color or you can use a white luminance pencil, whichever works better for you. I am using a white Posca here, but you will see that I will end up covering up most of it again <laughs> and then going back into it later. The white Posca is like a paint marker, but you can also use a white gel pen. Now I'm using my darkest greens to kind of pull some of the veining out of the leaves. This is peacock green here. I'm creating little lines and then next to these lines I'm using my white pencil to sort of pull a little highlight to make it look a little bit more three-dimensional. Again, I can go back and forth with my Prismacolor and my Pan Pastels. It's a beautiful thing. Well, I hope you've enjoyed yourself and you've learned a bit from this lesson. If you'd like to learn some more, like how to create a really cool space scene background, like a nebula, you can take one of my Etsy online classes for purchase. Go to Modern Coloring. And if you're looking for just a little bit of help with your technique, perhaps purchase my book, The Secrets of Coloring. Thanks, have a good one.